More than two million emergency calls are made every year in Victoria. You're not gonna die, mate. You're not gonna die. Ah! Well done. Ah! One call every 12 seconds. Securing the survivor. On the front line. You're with the ambulance. We've got ya. Paramedics work around the clock. You're being very, very brave. Fighting to save lives. Oh. Pass me your hand. It's okay. Cameras capture unguarded moments. Doing a good job, buddy. Of compassion. Hello. Look where you are. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. And laughter. We got it. This is not a catastrophe. <laughs> it's all part of the daily lives. Congratulations. Of these emergency service heroes. It's Emily Lum. I'll look after you, I promise. Woo! Yay! On this episode of Paramedics... You're having a heart attack, we're here to help you. We're here to make sure nothing goes wrong. A 38-year-old butcher fights for his life. The realisation that this might be the last time you're going to see the love of your life. Can you please ask him if he knows where he is right now? A language barrier makes it tough for Steve and Emily to work out why this man has suddenly collapsed. He's on the ground, he's really confused. We just have to figure out if this is life-threatening. Mohammed, open your eyes. So you fell off? I didn't fall off, it threw me off. It threw you off. And Eamon and Mike meet an unforgettable character. My first impression is that Miffy might be a bit of a tough customer. It's her way of the highway. Don't touch me, don't touch me. OK, Miffy. Emergency services, tell me exactly what happened. My husband's vomiting, he's got pains in his chest. He's very cool to the touch as well. At the Victorian Emergency Communication Centre, a call is coming in from an anxious wife. Her husband is only 38 years old, but appears to be having a major heart attack. And is he clammy to touch? Yes, he is clammy. So I'm organising some help for you right now. Just stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Yeah, Roger, I'm just wondering if there are other mock units attending as well. That's fine, thank you. Intensive care paramedic Cullen is on his way to support an ambulance crew already at the man's home. They've done an ECG and it's saying that he's having a STEMI. There's two types of heart attacks, a STEMI and a non-STEMI, and the STEMI is the worst of the two. It can often lead to cardiac arrest or death. Whilst you're having a heart attack, the muscle tissue is either being damaged or dying, and once it dies, it's irretrievable. It appears one of the major arteries to the patient's heart is blocked, and the longer it stays that way, the less likely he'll survive. Time is really important. We need to get the patient to a hospital where their arteries can be unblocked as quickly as possible. Increasing the risk even further is the man's relatively young age. We don't go to that many 38-year-olds having heart attacks. They tend to be a much bigger heart attack involving a larger area of the heart, and they tend to be much sicker patients. We're some distance away from the job, so we may need to rendezvous with the crew en route to Monash Hospital, which is capable of unblocking the blocked artery. Right now, Cullen is worried he just won't get to the patient in time. We're still at 10k, so if they're loaded right now, they've just got to start going that way from Monash. For every minute they stay on scene waiting for me, it's potentially detrimental to the patient. What's the worst thing a patient's ever said to you? We did go to that guy and he said, any amber that steps into my front yard, I'm going to kill. In the heart of Melbourne City, long-time partners Mike and Eamon are comparing notes on their most difficult patients. One time a patient said to me, your mother would be so disappointed in you. Oh, really? It's mate, you've got to be able to deal with anything in this job. Call me what you like, but don't bring mum into it. That one cuts deep. That one hurts. Your mother would be so disappointed. I was like, well... Yeah. Maybe. That's really harsh, and Eamon's mum is not disappointed in him. She's very proud of him, I know, because she told me. I've been called the sea bomb. Oh, yeah, but that's just like saying g'day. That doesn't count. Ambulance urgent. Fall from scooter. 94-year-old. Oh, no. 
Call her assisted patient into her unit. Patient stating she denies injuries, refusing AV attendance, AV to be cancelled. I don't think this lady wants us. No, but maybe she just needs a hand picking up her scooter. Sometimes a patient doesn't actually want us there. However, I'm already thinking, a 90-year-old woman, I think we should be safe here. She's declined several times, so I think she's probably going to decline any sort of assessment you want to do. But we'll give it a red-hot go, mate. Here we go. Oh, yeah, there's a lady. The culprit? Possibly. Hello. What's your name? Miffy. 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 I'm Eamon. That's Mike. What happened today? Where'd you end up here? Scooter. Your scooter? Yeah. They had work done. Gotcha. And they didn't do it right. It threw me off. Oh. Under. So, so you fell off? I didn't fall off. It threw me off. It threw you off. I make my first mistake. I say that she fell off the scooter. Mm-mm. Wrong. The scooter threw Miffy off. All the scooter's fault. Did you hurt yourself? Yes. Can I get up, please? All right. I've got sciatica. All right. Nurse. Nurse. My first impression is that Miffy might be a bit of a tough customer. It's her way or the highway. Don't touch me. I've got a fresh clavicle. Left, sure. left, left. No worries. I won't touch your left side at all. Just going to move some things out no, of the way. No, 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 no. Don't move things, please. I promise please, I'll pop please, it back. Please don't move things. We don't need to. Sure. Put it back. OK, I will. I'm not having a good time trying to charm Miffy. I like to think that, you know, I can get the oldies on side, but no, she's not keen to see us, so I think we're going to have a real battle on our hands getting her to hospital. Should we check oh you God. out out here oh God, instead? Oh God, oh God. Don't touch me, don't touch me. OK, Miffy. Emergency services. Go ahead, tell me exactly what happened. We've got a young guy playing footy, got a knock. And what part of the body was injured? Well, he's he got a problem with his collarbone or shoulder, but we also think there might have been head on. A head injury. Well. But he's just, yeah. So we've been dispatched to a 15 year old male who's been concussed maybe whilst playing football, has been knocked unconscious. On Melbourne's outskirts, intensive care paramedics Simon and Michaela have been called to an Aussie Rules football match where a teenager could have a serious head injury. He's still laying down, but he's responding when spoken to, not alert. Every Saturday, Sunday, there's a lot of football injuries, concussions, dislocated shoulders, broken ankles. So we'll get there and we'll see what his conscious state is like. If he needs to go to the trauma centre, then there's a helicopter available because we're a long way from the city. The majority of people who have a concussion, they are unconscious for a minute or so, and then they wake back up. The risk is over a couple of hours, you can get bleeding in the brain. The dangers of contact sport are not lost on Michaela, who plays in an Aussie Rules football team. You reckon you give them a run for their money? No, I don't. No. How can they? Would... I'd be you going to put out. your head over the ball? How can I be get... knocked out in three <laughs> seconds flat? I've played footy for a few years now. It's really good getting out there with the girls, but that age group of boys, they were all quite large. So, no, I think I would definitely be destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Where is the dude? Hi. How you going? I'm Simon. Where's, where's the patient? He's just over there, just there. What's his name? Huey. Huey. Fifteen-year-old Hugh collapsed after he was injured tackling an opponent. Hey, buddy. What happened? I went up to bump somebody and I bumped them and my collar popped out. And it really hurts. Sounds like he's had a hip and shoulder in the chest and then he's walked off and had a, a faint or collapse after that. What was the time period after his actual impact? Yeah. Uh, so probably two, 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 three minutes after impact. Trainer Sasha and Hugh's father, Tim, rushed to the young footballer's aid when he lost consciousness. So he got up and walked? Yeah, he got off and walked. We helped him okay, under the bench, yeah. and then we noticed that he, yeah. he was starting to um, sort of lose his like, consciousness, and also he went quite pale and nauseous. Yeah. With Hugh, I'm worried about critical head injuries and also spinal cord injury. With a brain injury, it can cause the cells in the brain tissue to die. He actually collapsed in our gym at that stage. I've missed out on so many things. It's been very depressing. It's the start of shift for Steve and Emily. They're busy discussing how they've coped with being separated from their families due to the COVID pandemic. No, my grandma. <laughs> My grandma sent me meat via Aussie Poke. 
The post! I can't believe it! We sent meat by the post! No, it was fine. I ate it. She made little gift there like Greek <laughs> meat patties. But despite some humorous moments, COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on Steve's life. How did you find not having... Mum. Not having your mum? Well, I called her and told her when I was got COVID. And she was just a mess. She's like, I'm coming up. I'm like, Mum, you literally cannot Can't. drive up to it's Melbourne. It's illegal. Literally it's illegal. actually illegal. The ring of steel is up. You're not coming through. My lips have now fallen on a feet. I don't know what the f going on. Contracting COVID was the sickest I've ever been in my life. Steve was one of the first Ambulance Victoria paramedics to be struck down with COVID. He contracted it while volunteering at a nursing home during the peak of the pandemic. At the start, all I was worried about was who I'd given it to. And then after the, everyone got negative swab results, thank God I didn't give it to anyone. I lost nine kilos in the space of three weeks. I was petrified. I might end up in ICU on a ventilator. I felt like I was going to die. It's scary. I look back now and I'm just thankful that I'm here and it didn't take me. I literally look great. Right. skin and bone, you looked terrible. Yeah. Watching Steve go through COVID, lose weight and not be able to eat and not be that flamboyant extrovert that he is, it was really hard. It was kind of nice for me to see because you always look fabulous. And I was like, aha, I'm prettier than you now. <laughs> Fortunately, Steve is fully recovered from the deadly disease and is grateful to be back on the job looking after the health of others. Nice. That has been unconscious, is now alert. Today, his first case is a code one call for a man who has suddenly collapsed in an inner city supermarket. It sounds cardiac to me if he's had a collapse. First thing in my head goes to are the life threatening causes that we need to treat involving his heart, his lungs, or brain. Time is tissue, and we need to get to this person immediately. How about your pain at the moment? It doesn't hurt that bad, like if you touch a certain level of seven. Southeast of Melbourne, 15 year old footy player Hugh has been badly injured and collapsed after an on field collision. Yeah, apparently he had an unconscious episode for about a minute. Do you remember this? No. Intensive care paramedics Michaela and Simon are concerned Hugh could have a dangerous concussion. So did you witness it, mate? Yeah, we yeah. were holding him at that stage. And yeah. He so was he complaining of bad pain at that time, or? There's now a worldwide focus on brain damage caused by sporting injuries and the catastrophic impact it can inflict in later life. Big breaths. A concussion is when the inside of your brain hits the inside of your skull. The majority of the time, have a loss of consciousness. All right, you can pop his legs down. Hugh's father, Tim ran to help his son as soon as he realised his boy was in trouble. I saw Huey running to the bench, cradling his arm, and then Sasha, the trainer, stood him up to take him around to give him a concussion test, and that's when he collapsed. So you dislocated your shoulder? Yeah. yeah. And did you feel a crunch or anything like that? Yeah, I felt a pulse. Yeah, yeah. Back on both. And then he just came straight up. Yeah, OK. To make matters worse, this was Hugh and his teammates first match in 18 months because of strict COVID restrictions. I really feel for him. He was super fit and ready to go. Huey loves playing the game and I think he loves more than anything his teammates. So where's it sore? Yeah. I've broken it once before as well. I've fractured it. Yeah. Yeah. On his ball off his bike. Yeah. Did the collarbone and was concussed. As a parent, there's always that want to protect your kids, and Huey means so much to us. He means everything to us. Are you big for your team, or are you...? Nah. Because Hugh broke his collarbone only a few weeks ago, Simon is worried this second fracture could be far more serious and require surgery. So get you to hold on to that with your good hand. So if you breathe on it, it'll help with your pain. The green stick is methoxyfluorine, which is an anaesthetic agent and a painkiller at low doses. One, two, three, roll. And put a bit of a board under. You'll feel a bump under your head. We've got you. Ready, set, go. Up. Hugh's teammates have now gathered to cheer their buddy off to the ambulance. <laughs> See you, fellas! The 
green stick can make you sort of disinhibited, and yeah, Hugh does uh, become disinhibited. I love you, boys. <laughs> With the penthrain on board, Hugh is feeling no pain and enjoying being the hero of the hour. The penthrain's gone to his head. You can see that Hugh's a bit of a character and he's pretty funny and popular amongst his mates, so I think the Penthrain just made him that little bit more louder and out there, which was funny to see. I love going in the ambulance. Yeah, that's cool. Get to ask the paramedics questions. Yeah, that's good. But right now, there's only one urgent question that needs answering. Does Hugh have any serious head or spinal injuries? Head and spinal cord injuries can be devastating for young patients because they can really change the path of their life. It's a dangerous game, the old football. As Hugh heads to the emergency department... When you're having a heart attack, there's a whole range of complications that can stop your heart and you can go into cardiac arrest. Intensive care paramedic Cullen is racing lights and sirens to a 38-year-old who's having a massive heart attack. An ambulance crew is currently treating the patient and Cullen is trying to reach them before they head to a specialised heart facility at a major hospital. Hey guys, how are you? Cullen arrives just as the paramedics are transferring the gravely ill man into their ambulance. Hello, my name's Cullen. Hello. G'day, mate. This is Adam. Hi, Adam. My name's Steph and I've got Chelsea with me as well. Hi, Steph. It's about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Sudden onset, generalised left and right chest pain. Yep. Um, Once reported, he was very pale, diaphoretic. I get in the back of the ambulance and take one look at Adam and think, this guy's really, really crook. He's grey, he's sweaty, he's vomiting. You right there, mate? We'll just sit, we'll just sit you up a little bit. Okay. Adam's obviously having a massive heart attack and there's a good chance that he could die on the way to hospital today. How are you feeling there, brother? Very tired. Yeah, very tired. Tighten the chest still? Ooh. Yeah, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to take up the monish, get this artery unblocked that, that's blocked in your heart, OK? You understand that you're having a heart attack? Yep. We're going to look after you, mate, OK? We're going to give you some medication to break up that clot as well, OK? It must be a terrifying experience to just be sitting at home and then the next minute you're having a massive heart attack, particularly being 38 years old. I don't know how I would cope. What worries you the most at the moment? The vomiting and the nausea or the pain? The pain. the pain. How big is it out of ten? Four, three, six, seven. It's a six or seven now. Okay. Adam looks really worried. He's quite anxious and not really sure what's going on. Paramedics Steph and Chelsea have given Adam fentanyl to relieve his pain. I'd like to draw up some adrenaline. Yep. Okay. Now, Cullen needs to be ready in case the critically ill man's heart suddenly stops. Just got to draw up some medications, Adam, and then we're going to get you sorted. I'm happy to start moving. So, Miffy, I'm trying to work out what's happened. Right. You were looking... I came home. Yep. On the scooter. Gotcha. Eamon and Mike are attempting to treat strong-willed Miffy after the 94-year-old came off her scooter. I've had work done. Yes. On the front of the scooter. Yes. They've set the wheels a different way. Gotcha. And the wheels turned uh -huh. and threw me off and under. And when you fell off the scooter... It you didn't fall off the scooter. It threw you off. The two front wheels didn't do what they were supposed to do. Scooter Mechanics of Melbourne, be warned. Miffy is on the warpath. You need to go into hiding. She is coming for you. And it bounced me off. My head. So you hit your head? I hit my head on the concrete. Right. I came to under the scooter. Despite hitting her head and losing consciousness, Miffy is refusing to put on a neck brace. So you think it perhaps knocked you out for a brief period? Yeah, there. I, I believe so. She may have a head injury that is preventing her from realising that she needs this ambulance. Can you reach up and grab my fingers with both hands? Give them a really big squeeze for me. Squeeze as hard as you that, can. That, that, that. But after stubbornly refusing paramedic help until now, Miffy suddenly allows Eamon to examine her. Now, I didn't find this until after everybody had gone. It's got a Easy. good gash there. 
It's going to need a wound dressing at the very least, yes, maybe, a, maybe even a stitch or two. I know. Miffy hasn't done this by half, or I should say the scooter hasn't done this by half. So, like a bomb diffuser, I am delicately trying to get Miffy to hospital. One wrong move, and this Miffy bomb could go off. Do you have a headache? No. Do you feel sick in the stomach? No. Have you had any seizures? No. All right, can I check your blood pressure and yes, stuff, and can. then we'll get you up to the hospital, all right? Let's go. Let's go. I agree. Nervously, I tell Miffy that I think she needs to go to hospital. Shock horror, she's happy to come. Who would have thought it? Perfect. I don't want them to cut my trousers off. No, they won't. You're a woman who gets what she wants, Miffy. I dare not cross you. I'm super shocked. I thought I was the Nana Whisperer, but Eamon, he's got her eating out of his hand. I don't know what he's done, but he's doing a good job. Lock the door and slam it. Got it. Right. Mike, I got that? that. All right, Mike's going to do that. Behind you, mate. And I'm going to get you in the ambulance. Although Miffy finally seems agreeable to receiving treatment... We're going to fix you up. Mike and Eamon are still worried their iron-willed patient could change her mind at any time about going to hospital. But just lift up the lid and see if there's anything in there. Check the mail, no worries. When you got crunched, hip and shoulder, mm -hmm. did you hit the ground then? No, I tried to no. hip and shoulder them. Yeah. And then I just felt to pop or, or yeah. crack. 15-year-old Hugh appears to have broken his collarbone during a junior footy game. It was funny, my coach goes, Hugh, if, you if you've broken anything, you'd be in tears. Shortly after being crunched, he collapsed and lost consciousness for several minutes. And then I just ran off to the bench, and then it just, like, big, like, almost like a heat stroke kind of wave came over me, and I just yeah. fainted. Intensive care paramedics Simon and Michaela are taking Hugh to hospital to fix his collarbone and test for possible brain or spinal damage. The only thing that hurts is just a little prick that was in my arm. But yeah. Was... I put a drip in Hugh and gave him some anti-nausea medication with a potential spinal cord injury. We don't want him vomiting or moving around and injuring himself further. You're having a bit of difficulty keeping your head straight, yeah. but I, I do need you to keep your head still whilst yeah. this is on. That's all right. Well, I know it's a bit hard when you feel a bit loose, relaxed yeah. after the green whistle. Despite Simon's concerns, Hugh is blissfully unaware of the dangers and up for a chat. What's your favourite song, Simon? I would have to say uh, the new Hold On Justin Bieber song. I haven't heard that. Very can catchy. Can you sing it for me? Uh, <laughs> I, let, just give me a couple of puffs on that green whistle. <laughs> and then we both will be singing it. <laughs> we'll harmonise, all right? Yes. <laughs> Your old favourite song was Miley Cyrus, though. I've moved on from Miley Cyrus. Simon's favourite artist is Justin Bieber. Am I surprised about that? Not really. I think his music taste is, like, the equivalent to, like, a teenage girl. What about you, Michaela? Oh, my favourite song? Yeah. Is it really old of me to say all I do is listen to podcasts now? No. Ah. How's your pain at the moment? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good, all right. We've still got the green whistle there, but you don't need it at the moment. Yeah, I, I, think you're, I, I think you're apples at the moment. So with Hugh and his head injury, it's important that we keep ongoing assessment of him, but he's talking a lot, so uh, there's no problems with that. Do you want me to do any acting when we get out and start filming? Just like... go, oh! <laughs> I broke my collarbone! Help! Simon, help! He's like, what colour's the stick? Green. Oh, if you're colourblind, it's not green. Oh, I'm not colourblind. Oh. I, I, no, I, I said my collarbone. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> I'm colourblind. Simon, you might have been on the green whistle a little bit. Oh, yes, bit. yeah, puff, puff, pass. No. Hughes definitely enjoyed his trip to hospital, but the fun part is about to end. Scans and x-rays will soon reveal the teenager's football future. Hopefully, Hugh will only have a fractured clavicle and he'll only have, you know, a couple of months off. I'm hopeful that he won't have any permanent damage. It would be really devastating if he had a bad injury. First came back. I'm having a broken collarbone. So are you. Oh, see ya. Do you know what's happened? He's down one of the aisles. OK. He's conscious, he's breathing. Yeah. Steve and Emily have been called to a supermarket where a 63-year-old man has collapsed while shopping. Do you know if he hit his head? 
Okay. Yeah. The aisle where the man fell down has been cordoned off. Hello, sir. I'm Steve, and this is Emily. We're from the ambulance service. Can you tell me your name? Hey. Muhammad. Hi, Muhammad. Muhammad is laying on the ground there. He's super confused. Confusion can indicate a stroke. It can indicate a seizure. Do you know what's happened today? <laughs> Can't remember, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Muhammad speaks limited English, so finding out what caused him to collapse is not going to be easy. If you can't speak to the patient or the patient's unconscious, you go right back to basics. You're figuring out from head to toe what is going on with this patient. Did anyone witness him falling? Because we well, he heard, it. heard it. You heard it. He went back yeah. on his head. Okay, so he's hit his head. It was like he had a seizure. Okay. Could you ask him if he has any cardiac history? He's fallen into a nearly comatose state. We need to figure out why he's collapsed today and we need to figure it out very quickly. What did the pain feel like when it came on? Very intense. Very intense. Was it burning, sharp, heavy? I didn't think I was having a heart so. Intensive care paramedic Cullen is fighting to keep Adam alive after the 38-year-old suffered a life-threatening heart attack at home. Take a couple of deep breaths for me in and out. What do you do for a job, Adam? Butcher. You're a butcher. And you're 38 years of age. Yeah. You got a family? Adam tells me he's a butcher at Coles, and today he's on a day off, and he's just with his wife in the spa, having a great time, having a few drinks, and all of a sudden, he gets this crushing chest pain. Cats and dogs. Did you have them before you were married, or...? Yeah? Adam is like a caramello koala. He's hard on the outside, but he's the biggest softy on the inside, and he has the biggest heart. Adam's wife, Jacinda, was in shock. When paramedics warned her, he was suffering a potentially fatal heart attack. I'm thinking, this can't be real. I, I can't not see him again. You still got significant pain, six out of 10. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a little bit more pain relief for that. The realization that he could die, that this might be the last time that I hold his hand, or the last time you're gonna see the love of your life. It's Jerry. Adam, we just need another microparamedic to care for you. Cullen is increasingly worried Adam could go into cardiac arrest at any moment and has now called for backup. We're just going to stop the ambulance briefly to let another intensive care paramedic get on board just to cover our bases in case anything else happens, OK? Can you please ask him if he knows where he is right now? No. No, he doesn't. In an inner city supermarket, Steve and Emily are trying to find out what caused 63-year-old Muhammad to suddenly collapse while shopping. Can you ask him? I'm just going to touch his neck and tell me if he has any pain in his neck. Because Muhammad speaks limited English, a member of the Somali community is helping the paramedics communicate with him. And does he have any other medical history? It's really nice that these women have stopped to help Muhammad today. And it was a really strong sense of community, which is quite rare these days. And it was really quite special to see. Any pain in his neck? Yes. With Muhammad's friend helping them, Steve and Emily first need to find out if he suffered a life-threatening stroke or heart attack. Can you just ask him if he can reach up with both his hands and grab my hands? And squeeze very tight. And oh, no, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Yeah. Oh, it looks good. It's regular, it's about 80. I've done a stroke assessment on the ECG. Everything's within normal limits. We have to check everything. It could be low blood pressure, dehydration. There are so many things that could have caused him to collapse today. Can you ask him if he has a history of any seizures? Yeah? Yes. He does. Yes. So he suffers from seizures. They said they heard a loud thump. Yeah. So he's fallen from standing high. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. head. No pain in your legs? 
Was there any pain there? Falling from standing height may not seem like it's something big. However, when you have nothing stopping your fall, that's a direct head strike. It can cause bleeding on the brain, which can lead to a massive head injury. Mohammed, keep your eyes open for me. Open your eyes. Hi, like Kate. Anterior stemming, really diaphoretic, vomiting, blood pressure's dropping. A second intensive care paramedic, Kate, has arrived to assist Cullen, who's desperately trying to keep heart attack victim Adam alive. There was a period there where he's becoming increasingly drowsy, blood pressure's dropping, heart rate was dropping. So that's when I requested you. The fact that his heart rate's slowly dropping makes me think if his heart does stop, we may not be able to resuscitate him. Personal, you guys know. I appreciate it. Anyway. Mate, this is the sort of thing that Kate and I train for, OK? You're having a heart attack, we're here to help you. We're here to make sure nothing goes wrong. Right now, I'm pretty determined to make sure that at 38 years of age, this is not going to be Adam's last day on this earth. Light's going to be bright. I'm going to meet you at the back, all right? Adam has survived the trip to hospital. The Monash cardiology team will now do their best to clear the blocked artery that's endangering his life. Just seeing out if anything changes, all right? Adam looks so sick. People often die when they look that sick. Green. Good to go. I'm going to go lock up the house while Eamon takes care of you. Shout back. Shout Roger. back, Foxy. I'll pull it nice and strongly. Mike and Eamon have managed to get Miffy into their ambulance after the 94-year-old initially refused paramedic help. Because you've fallen and hit your head... I didn't fall. Oh, you, I were you, pounced. you were thrown up. I'm sorry. Miffy corrects me straight away. The scooter threw her off. Because you were oh. thrown off your scooter and you hit your head, I'm just a bit concerned about your neck. Miffy was knocked unconscious after being thrown off her scooter and Eamon is worried she could have suffered brain or spinal damage. So I might lie you flat and keep your head in a nice alignment okay. to protect your spine, OK? So okay. I'm you lose the pillow, I'm sorry. Eamon also needs to treat a severe cut on Miffy's leg caused by the fall. Please don't cut my slacks. We will not cut your slacks. I've locked up the door, I pulled it tight, and I double-checked the big door's locked. Uh, we're good to go, mate. I used to ride 1,000 cc motorbikes. Why were you riding them? Because that's what I did. I had cut a beast up into sections. So you've got some butchery skills? Yes. Better watch out, Glassy. And drinks. What sort of drinks? All sorts of drinks. Cocktails? Yes. I mixed at the Melbourne Cup. Oh, really? You make a good martini? There's no such thing as a good martini. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of Miffy, but it's always really nice, you know, talking to someone who's got a lot of life experience. You learn so much. So I worked in Africa when the Malmo were fighting. What did you do in Africa? People. What did you do with the people? Miffy is one of the best characters I've met in my career with Ambulance. She is a big personality. She's done everything from mixing cocktails at the Melbourne Cup to riding motorbikes and travelling through Africa. She was even a butcher at one stage. This left ankle was broken on the motorbike. Hello? Yes. It's got a plate. It's got a plate. screws. Gotcha. People like Miffy, they keep life interesting. She's very independent, very strong-willed. It's very relieving to actually get Miffy into the ambulance in a hospital. Miffy will now be given a thorough checkover, provided the independent 94-year-old agrees to further treatment. How come I didn't know that I was so sore until everybody had gone? Well, you probably didn't try to walk on it, did you? Yeah. Oh, you did? I love patients like her. She's this fierce, strong woman. I think it's going to take a lot more than a dodgy scooter with misaligned wheels to keep Miffy down. You were a bit distracted by it, the scooter throwing you off. It's not important. Oh, OK, no problem. OK, Mohammed, I need you to keep your head nice and still. And we're just going to put a board underneath you, OK? 
Steve and Emily are concerned Muhammad could have head injuries after suffering a probable seizure and collapsing on the floor of a supermarket. One, two, three. Nero is good. He's moving his toes, moving his legs. Yep. The only pain that he said he had was in his neck when he moved it side to side. Yep. As they prepare to take their patient to the ambulance... Has he passed out before? Has he fainted before? Emily contacts the 63-year-old's family. Yeah, for four days. Wow. Talking to Muhammad's daughter, we find out that he's actually been fasting for the last four days. Things like dehydration, electrolyte imbalances could be a reason why he's fallen today. He's been fasting for four days. OK. They're not sure if he's ever passed out, but he has been feeling faint the last four days. OK. Emily has found out from Muhammad's family he hasn't been eating or drinking because of his religious beliefs. You've been fasting. Do you think that's why you fell? No. You don't know. We'll have to take you to the hospital and get you sorted out. <laughs> Any medications at the moment? No, after fasting. Say that again? After fasting. After fasting. Yeah, but are you taking many of them? So I'm getting the impression that muhammad has been off his meds. On top of fasting and causing severe dehydration, a seizure was probably very likely today. This tablet is for sore stomach. Would you like to take this? No. OK. So he's not taking medication as well? Is that what he's saying? I in think so. Days? Yeah, until no the fasting. No food, no medication. Speaking with Muhammad, it seems like he might have been also avoiding his medications with the four-day fast, which raises concerns because we're now worried that he can have a seizure at any time. Right now, Muhammad, do you feel like you could be sick? Steve and Emily are taking Muhammad to hospital after the 63-year-old collapsed following four days of no eating or drinking. Yes or no? I need a direct answer. During his fast, Muhammad also stopped taking his regular medications and is now refusing any treatment from the paramedics. So he doesn't want to take it? OK. We often do run into patients where their religious beliefs and practices conflict with medical advice. It's a very, very grey area because we can only offer advice and it's totally up to them to make those decisions. You can feel me touching your feet? Yeah, move your toes for me. Wriggle these. Steve is carrying out final checks on Muhammad to look for any hidden injuries. We're here at hospital. We'll get you in and get you seen. Muhammad will now have scans for possible head and spinal damage and remain under observation in case he has any further seizures. I think he's going to be fine. I think he needs to eat his food and he needs fluids. I know he's yes. fasting for religious purposes and that's also a fine line. Like your health comes... I know. Because you can't be religious if you're not healthy, you know? I mean, he could have dropped dead. But as the team head back to base, all that talk about fasting is making Emily even hungrier. I can't wait to just have a cup of tea. Yeah. I've still got Rocky Road in the fridge, which... Oh. Baby, suck it down with oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I found, like, chocolate in places when I woke up this morning. Are you serious? I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm dying at you having chocolate all over yourself. Yeah, I know, but, you know, no regrets. Anything for Rocky Road. Oh, well, a treat for later, babe. It would be rude not to. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> How is the shoulder feeling? It's feeling good, actually. Zeke. I reckon it's almost healed. It's four weeks since Hugh broke his collarbone in a footy accident. I just went up to bump somebody and then my collarbone popped out. Doctors treated the fracture, but cleared Hugh of any head or spinal injuries. So have you got full movement? Yeah, pretty much. The 15-year-old is recovering well, but it'll be months before he can play football again. How long have you got left in the sling? Two more weeks and then a lot of rehab, probably. There's obviously some challenges with a broken collarbone, but I can live out, like, day-to-day -day life pretty well. Hopefully get back into football. I still love the sport and I love playing with all my friends. I was about to ask you as well, do you reckon I could go surfing with Leon this weekend? Ooh. Oh. After COVID, we'd been waiting 18 months to play, so he couldn't wait to get back out for the first practice match. Hugh's dad, Tim, feared the worst when he saw his son fall to the ground unconscious. 
It was pretty confronting. Seeing Hugh getting loaded into the ambulance was um, not what any parent wants to see. Kingsley! Although he'll miss most of the season, Hugh still goes to training to support his teammates. Hughie, hit me! I've been playing football since under 10s. I've loved every minute of it. I met so many new people. So many of them are still my lifelong friends and I've gotten so many good memories. All right, boys, we've got a special guest tonight. Huey's come back, so let's get around him, boys. He's very kind and caring through his friends and family. He exudes a great energy. You just want to be around him. Huey, bring it in! It's just a great club. It has a really warm feeling. It's more like a family than a club. That I never want to give it up. Don't touch me. I've got a fractured clavicle. Left, no. left. Initially refusing paramedic care after being thrown off her scooter, feisty 94-year-old Miffy finally went to hospital and allowed doctors to treat her cuts and bruises. Do you know what's happened today? Muhammad spent the night in hospital where he was treated for a seizure and dehydration. He was released the following day and advised to resume taking his epilepsy medication to avoid any more dramatic shopping outings. You right there, mate? 38-year-old <laughs> Adam almost died when he had a massive heart attack while at home with his wife, Jacinda. How did the pain feel like? Very intense. Very intense. Fighting to survive, Adam spent four days in hospital. A stent was inserted to prevent any further blockages to his heart. Good to be home? It's good to be home. Back in your own bed? Yep. Adam is now on daily medication and is recovering at home. After coming so close to dying, he's cherishing every moment with Jacinda and their much-loved fur babies. The fur boys did really miss you while you were here. Is that true, Archibald? Yes, Do you Dad. miss Daddy? I feel extremely lucky. Like, I, I, I just feel like it's a new lease for life. You know, the sky's still bluer. Birds singing a bit more. The type of heart attack, Adam. suffered is often fatal. Doctors call it the Widowmaker. It was definitely the scene of the crime. It was where you first felt something wasn't right. Yeah, it was. The thought of him not making it and not being able to be there with him and hold his hand should, should he die terrified me. Now, where's that cup of tea? It's coming. I've just had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Jacinda was amazing throughout the whole thing from beginning to end. <laughs> Love you. Love you. I missed you. Missed you too. I appreciate my family, you know, life just in general. It's sweeter than it ever has been before.